News surrounding major religions has been front and center the last few weeks. Just moments ago, we looked at the outrage and in some instances violence that resulted in part because of a film insulting Islam and the prophet Muhammad. But right now, we wanted to take a different look at religion and science for this week's Faces of Faith. Cosmologist Lawrence Krauss joins me now from London. He is the author of A Universe from Nothing. Uh, Lawrence, good morning. Uh, nice to have you back on the program this morning. Uh, so it's let, always good to be back. Let's talk about this whole idea of nothing. Uh, explain your book, if you will, first of all. I mean, you say the universe was created without the hand of God and that science can explain why everything exists. So explain that. <laughs> well, let me make it clear. I say it's plausible that it was created uh, without God. I, I think that's what's worth celebrating is the fact that we we can see some plausible steps. We don't know all the answers and I don't claim we know all the answers but even the fact that the laws of nature themselves could have created everything we see all hundred billion galaxies each containing a hundred billion stars from nothing is absolutely remarkable and the discoveries that have made that possible that idea possible are worth celebrating. The point is that we have kind of realized after a, a hundred years of studying the universe that the total energy of the universe could be precisely zero. And if you were going to create a universe from nothing, that's probably a good first step. The laws of quantum mechanics tell us that empty space is a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence in a time scale so short you can't see them. Strange things can happen. And in fact, it's possible without any supernatural shenanigans for matter and particles to be created from nothing. It's even possible that space and time themselves popped into existence from nothing. It's allowed by the laws of physics. And that is so remarkable that, that we shouldn't feel it's a, a threat. We should celebrate this new discovered knowledge. Um, okay, so for those folks at home who just listened to that and they're shaking their heads saying, what, how is this guy saying <laughs> that something could come from nothing? Um, are you saying that, there, that there's energy in that nothing in that space? You don't, well, in fact, it, the, what's, what's really remarkable is once you put gravity into the mix, you can make, you can have positive energy and negative energy, and you can start out with zero energy and then create positive energy particles that have positive energy, but their gravitational attraction has negative energy, and the sum total can be zero. It sounds like the ultimate free lunch, and it potentially is. Now, these things are strange, but the world of quantum mechanics is extremely strange. But we rely on it for the semiconductors that allow me to talk to you right now. And the fact is that nature, the real universe, is stranger than we could have imagined. It's, so, it's in fact, far more interesting than, the, than the, the fables produced by Iron Age peasants who wrote them down before the, they even knew the Earth orbited the sun, for example. So what do you say, though, when, when people say, you know, it, it, maybe the, the, the notion of nothing uh, creating something, that, that sounds every bit as unbelievable as saying that God created all this. What do you say to those people? It, well, I, what I say is that the, the real difference is that we're not presuming the answers before we ask the questions. When you say God did it, it's really kind of a, a lazy result saying, well, I don't know how, where it came from and I'm going to assume intentionality, which is really what our ancient ancestors always assumed. They assumed that everything that happened had some intention. But what we've discovered is, is that we've been driven to these amazing discoveries. For example, I'll, I'll, here's an observational discovery that defies common sense. We have discovered, and one of the reasons I wrote the book, is we've discovered that empty space itself, empty space getting rid of all the particles and all the radiation, empty space weighs something. In fact, it has the dominant energy in the universe. It's causing the universe to expand ever faster, faster and faster. The discovery was so amazing that it was awarded the Nobel Prize last year. Now that sounds crazy, but it's true. Hmm. And I think the point is that we have to force our beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality instead of deciding this is the universe we want and we're going for to force reality to conform to that. The universe doesn't care what we want. And one of the beauties of science is it's forced us to change our attitudes about many things. It's forced us to open our minds. And I, I think that's one of the great aspects of science is that we've learned that our preconceptions aren't always right. And certainly... So as I say, that, you know, that we didn't know the truth before asking the universe what the truth is. So then is science compatible with religion in any way? Well, look, we can't, I can't argue that there's no purpose to the universe. I can say there's no evidence of purpose to the universe, but there could be purpose that I don't know about. But the point is that what, what we can say is that if there is purpose, it is strongly hidden, and we don't need any supernatural miracles to create everything we see. I think... In terms of a vague deism, science and religion are compatible in that sense. But in terms of, the, in fact, the actual doctrines of the world's religions, 
Science is not compatible with them. The, the miracles of the Bible are inconsistent with science. But, I, you know, I think most people who claim they're religious don't really think Jonah lived inside of a whale or don't believe, actually, that when a priest blesses a wafer, it really turns into the body of Jesus Christ. I think they kind of throw out the things that they, don't, they think are silly, and they keep the mm -hmm. things they like because they want to believe them. And I so, think that's the main thing. People want to believe that someone's taking care of them, that the universe is a place where somehow they have some meaning. And in fact, what I would argue is if we realize that we create the meaning in our own lives, our lives can become, in fact, richer than, uh, than, than believing in, in these fairy tales. So just to be clear, though, are you saying there is no God or that you just believe that the universe was created without the hand of God? Well, I'm not saying I'm not making grand claims that in, in either case. I'm not saying there is no God. I'm saying there's no evidence for God. You don't seem to need a God to create a universe. And in fact, in that sense, I, I personally wouldn't call myself an atheist because I don't presume to claim there's no God. If anything, I declare myself as an anti-theist because I can't say with absolute certainty there is no God. But what I would say is I'd much prefer to live in a universe without one. Lawrence Krauss, uh, always great to have you on the show. Always a fascinating discussion. Uh, thank you so Thanks. much, and best of luck with your new it's book as well, a Universe from Nothing. Thanks. And for more stories on faith, be sure to check out our widely popular belief blog at cnn.com slash belief.